Hey, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Father God, thank you for the breath of life. It's another cool morning here in uh, Idaho, but things are starting to melt off. It's getting a little bit warmer. Uh, well, warm to us anyway. Um, we've been talking about uh, Romans chapter 12, and we started with verse 1. It's, and verse 1 is this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Now we jump to verse 2, and it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Man, wouldn't you like to know what is that good and perfect and, and acceptable will of God? Well, yes, we would. We're going to talk about it the rest of this week because we can prove it. We can, f we, we can know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But let's back up. It says, do not be conformed to this world. I want to talk about that word conformed. It comes from a Greek word, and it's spelled S-U-S-C-H-E-M-A-T-I-Z-O. Suskematizo, I think is how they pronounce it. Um, that word, our word schematic comes out of it. And if you think about it, schematic is like a, 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 a picture of a wiring diagram. It's a, a, it's, it's, it's a program um, or a diagram of how to wire something, put it together. It could be also, uh, you know, a, a different kind of plan. It doesn't have to just be um, electrical. But if you think about this, it says, do not be conformed. Do not be this word uh, to the world. In other words, God wants us programmed a different way. He wants us, uh, the, the diagram of our life, it, to match up with his kingdom rather than to this world. So do not be conformed to this world. If we look at Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, it says our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly eagerly wait for the savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see our citizenship when you and I were born again, our citizenship was transferred from this world to the kingdom of God. That's why we're different. That's why we need to live according to kingdom principles, kingdom of God principles, rather than world principles. We need to be aware of how the kingdom of God functions because that's how we're supposed to live because we are citizens of heaven. In John 17, verse 15 through 19, it says, I do not pray that, and, and this is, by the way, Jesus praying to God the Father for his disciples just before he went to heaven, or, or before he was uh, uh, crucified, buried, and then raised from the dead, and, uh, and ascended into heaven. It says, I do not pray, this is him praying in the garden, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, and he's talking about us, um, his disciples, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of this world. Did you hear that? We are not of this world. Just as I am not of this world, Jesus said. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them in the world. And for their sakes, I sanctified myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Sanctified, what does that mean? It means to be set apart. So in other words, um, he says to set them apart by your truth. This is God's truth, his word. And so what we need to do is apply this word to our life daily. Why? Because it sets us apart from the world. Oh, did you get that? That's what helps us uh, from being conformed to this world. It begins to change us from the inside out. It's his word that does that. Are you, are you with me? So we need to become more and more aware of the truth of the word of God and again apply those to our lives. As we do that our mind is renewed and we're going to talk more about this tomorrow. Our mind is renewed to the things of God. So we need to know the truth that governs our life. Not the truth that governs this world but the truth that governs our life. We're going to pick this up again tomorrow. Remember Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.